What's up, guys? Welcome to the Steve Bizogany Show. Today, we are going to be talking about finding your purpose and, you know, locating your place in this world um, and actually and then maximizing your happiness within that spot. So basically, first, I'll start off with my story, which was like for me when I I mean, and still, I mean, it's it, first of all, let's understand that this is really and it sounds so cliche to say this because, um, you know, but it really is life is really a journey. It's that's not really a destination. Uh, a mentor of mine once said that it, you know, when I, in terms of like balance, like no one's ever going to achieve balance. It's actually more about balancing. And I think that's a great piece of advice that I received. And I was like, you know what? That's amazing. Like it is about balancing because it's, you'll never just be balanced period. And then that's it. Uh, I think that was so, uh, and so you finding your purpose is something that's very similar to that. It's not about, you know, Okay, I found it. Boom, we're done. Like, it's not like that. Like, you don't just, like, for me, I didn't just become a real estate agent coach. Like, I didn't just get here and just be like, okay, boom, awesome. I'm good. And that, and that's it. Like, the, it's, I, you know, that when I first became a real estate agent, you know, I, I didn't just get to real estate agent. I, I never would have thought that it would have evolved into being a coach to other agents. Um, um, so like, it's an evolving process. It's a journey that you have to go on and you do have to give in to that. And I mean, it sounds, and I'm trying not to sound so like super stereotypical and cliche and just say like, you know, stereotypical coach language. Oh, it's about the journey. And it's, you know, enjoy the journey. It's about the journey. It's not about the destination. It's like such a cheesy cop out way to say something, but it, like, I, I mean, they say it because it's true, but like, I'm trying to say it in a way that it's, you know, it's not so cliche. So, um, so like, for example, my story, you know, I'm, you know, I start out this broke college kid and like when I'm, when I'm in school and I'm like watching my classmates go to job interviews and I'm sitting in my class or in my uh, bedroom trying to figure out what to do, I want to do with my life. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, I, what is wrong with me that I don't want to go do what they are doing? Like, how come I'm not excited about going into corporate America? Why am I not, why don't I have a drive to go get a job interview or why don't I, you know, why don't I, why aren't I like that? Like, what's wrong with me? Am I the one who screwed up? Like, I'm not like everybody else. What gives? And then, you know, obviously, my journey, as I learned, that's what being an entrepreneur is about. You know, you don't know all the all the answers, and you grow into a certain pattern that, you know, just by saying yes to more things in your life. Uh, and that's, you know, one of my, my show notes is today that I wanted to talk about is like, uh, what you don't, like, if, what are the things that people say? Like I get a lot of the times is, uh, well, S Steve, I don't really know what I want to do with my life. I, no, I just don't like anything. And it's like, well, that's not true. You just don't like anything you've tried, which means you still have to keep saying yes to things. You keep saying yes to more things. Explore. Like get out there, do more, say yes to more, explore. Like don't, don't just, okay, I don't like anything. No, finish the sentence. You haven't, you don't like anything that you've tried. So, um, and that was for me, like, I never thought I, like, I mean, when I got to Keller Williams about being a coach, like, I never thought I'd be a coach, uh, and helping other real estate agents. I thought I was going to be a real estate agent. I was going to sell homes. I was going to build wealth doing, you know, I'm going to sell homes. I was going to buy homes and I was going to invest in homes and real estate was just going to be my thing. And it was going to be my thing. I was going to go help other people like that, that, that never thought about that. Um, and, and being a coach and coaching people to the level that I've coached people to. And it's like. Well, like, n having having said that, it's like, I have, it's just that I haven't tried yet. I haven't tried a certain amount of things yet. So I had to say yes. I had to say, like, when I got to Keller Williams, I, I went, I didn't know what I was, I didn't think I was going to coach. I thought it was going to be, well, it kind of is. But Keller Williams is, is stereotype. In the real estate industry, it's, you know, it's kind of got that stereotype of, you know, oh, you're drinking the Kool-Aid over at Keller Williams. You're one of those rah-rah guys. You know, that's. And that's what the stereotype is for the coaches over at Keller Williams, and they have that reputation. And it's like, and I never wanted anything to do with it because I don't like that rah rah crap. And I don't believe in standing in front of a a coach and you know a pro what do they call them productivity coaches I think. And I'm not you know, again. I love Keller Williams. I love working here, um, but I don't believe in like a lot of the stuff they do. And when my office asked me to be like the team leader at my office, I was like, 
I didn't really want to do it because I don't believe in bold. I don't believe in ignite. Like the tactics, I don't believe in, and I don't. You know, I want to teach things the way I want to teach them. So when I get there, like, you know, getting sidetracked here, but like when I first started, I, you know, they, they, I didn't get to. I didn't think I want to be a coach. I don't want to be like, oh, you want me to be a coach and teach new agents how to do this business? Like, if I had said no to that, I wouldn't be where I am today. So you have to say yes to more things. I said yes to being a coach. I said yes because they said, Steve, you were rookie of the year when you were at Berkshire Hathaway. Now that we have this new office here, you know, I would, we'd love to hear what the rookie of the year this past year has to say. And, you know, I'm sure you can provide some value. Sure. Why not? It's not going to be some rah-rah class, though. And they're like, no, that's fine. We don't need that. I'm like, okay, cool. It turns out Keller Williams isn't as rah-rah as everybody thinks on the outside, which is good. I mean, I think it's probably specific to each office, but I know our office is not is not like that so much, uh, and which is good. But and but I'm gl- glad I said yes to that. So, like, for, again, so let's, like, if you're one of those people that's saying, I don't like anything, no, finish the sentence. I don't like anything I've tried. So try more. Go out and do more. Um, now, here's another way to find out what you do like is look where where do you go in your free time? Where does your mind go in your free time? Where does your activity go in your free time? When you have, where does your, where do you spend your leisure activity? And if you just say like, well, I'm just a lump on the couch, well, then you need to change. Like there's no other way around that. Like if you're like, oh, I just like to binge watch TV and, and chill. Well, then you need something to drive you. You need some more drive. You need something to, uh, you need to find some like legit, something better to do um, because you can't, you know, there's no passion or drive there. And, and you need to start, like, I, the, again, I kind of feel like I'm sounding like a broken record here, but like you just need to get out and start saying yes to more things. Like go join a club, go join a group. Because The reason you're sitting there in your leisure activity, not doing anything is because you don't have enough to do. Um, so like, again, but say, for example, you don't go to, uh, you don't go to your, your leisure activity, you don't just go to sit on a couch and binge watch. Like what maybe your leisure activity is like, you know, I really like to garden or I really like to run or I really like to do CrossFit or I really like to play soccer or drink beer or, and you know, drinking beer is of its, in and of itself, a culture now. Like you, craft beer out there is amazing today. I love, love craft beer. And like, you can seriously go make a job and get a seriously fun job in brewing. Like maybe you can come become a brewmaster and like be an apprentice and learn how to brew beer and go chase your passion. I mean, that's what, what lights your heart on fire? Like that, because you're trying new things. Like my wife and I took a beer brewing class. Like we, because we love beer and we started brewing beer on our own. And it's like, this is really cool. And when it came to actually writing our own recipes, we're like, okay, this is a little too hardcore for us. But like, we still like the beer. We still like making the kits and stuff. But we're not going to be like, maybe we're not going to be hardcore brewers. Um, but maybe we will. Who knows? And maybe it just might not be that time in our life to do that. Um, that the journey may involve, evolve to that. You know, who knows? So it's just another, um, you just have to look inside yourself and find out where, what lights you on fire. For me, I, I, nothing was lighting me on fire in college. I was like, these classes suck. Accounting sucks. I can't believe I picked this major. I just wasted a college degree. This is all crap. You know, I'm doing, and then, you know, funny, I, I, I like to tell people I went to college to learn what I didn't want to do with my life. Um, and that's exactly what college did for me. Not saying, I don't believe in college unless you're doing something that's requires a real degree. Like, unless you are going to become an accountant for real, like CPA or financial advisor of some kind or doctor or lawyer or something or engineer, something of special. Like I don't believe in college for any of the other stuff. Like, like, I don't know, like underwater basket weaving or whatever else they teach there. Um, so, you know, it's a polarizing topic sometimes, but I think the prices that people pay and all that stuff is just ridiculous. So topic for another day, let's not get sidetracked. <laughs> um, so yeah, so basically you just have to try more things and you need to Focus, like pay attention and, and you need to reflect where, and you know what's a good idea is one of the things I did when I was in at St. Joseph's. I used to just take a minute to reflect at, you know, before I'd go to bed, I'd be like, okay, what did I do today? Like, okay, I, what did I do in my free time today? Like in between classes, what was I doing? And I realized that I like to play video games a lot at the time. And now I haven't played a video game in a long time. Uh, I'm actually a love 
Halo, by the way, for anybody out, you know, for anybody of those Halo players out there, all, I'm all about it. So, but anyway, so I was a video game player, and what I realized that I like to do is like, I liked a certain kind of game, and now I was I like shooter games. I liked the imagination of the, you know, I liked science fiction. So like one of the reasons they didn't like Call of Duty, I liked Halo better because there was more science fiction in it. There was more fantasy involved. There was more. Um, it got my mind thinking more, and it was cool. And it was cool to be engaged in that world. Like you know, Call of Duty was more realistic to like the way wars are fought today, um, and that paints a different picture. Now, I just wasn't into that. Now that I also realized I played certain games, like what, what's it, that? Uh, there's that computer game we play with. A, there's a monkey with the darts, and they had like balloon buster, whatever it's called, with the monkey and the darts or whatever. I don't know what it's called. Um, but like games like that, like kind of like strategy come games with you know um, you know science fiction. Like I realized like this is where okay, what do I? What can I do? Like how? Okay, I like this stuff. This stuff gets my brain going. What? I need to find something that stimulates this. And then I realize, okay, money. Money is like I can grow money the same way I'm growing this monkey dart throwing business over here. Instead of doing that, I can grow money. I like, really like to grow money. Like how can I – what can I do with money? And then it took me to the stock market. And then I started learning about the stock market. And I started doing all these things. And it was like, okay, cool. And then the stock market, I realized it was too slow. But how can I – I still want to grow money. There's a way to do this. And I found real estate and wholesaling. And I went from wholesaling. And I went from wholesaling to real estate agent. And I went from real estate agent to you know real estate coach. And now here I am like – but this all started. Like if we take that trail back, it brought me back to video games. So like it's a, di- it's a journey. It's a journey that's different for every person. But you got to like really reflect and like why do I like what I do? Like what you're doing like today because it will take you on a path that will bring you to where you need to be. And I strongly believe that we are all put on this earth for a certain reason and unless you go out and take some action to find out what that purpose is. If you're not – let's put it this way. Uh, what is it? You know, Not to be religious or anything but like this. But like in the Bible it says, seek and you shall find. You know, ask and you shall receive. Like you need to get out there and seek – so that you can find <laughs> and let's not like make this over complicated here um and when you do look you do find and that's that i mean there's no ifs ands or buts around it um one of the things in um the book think and grow rich it's the literally the holy grail of personal development and success and i think anybody who i think every person i should i think that book should be required in schools to read and when it comes to, I mean, there's this top, there's a couple sections in the book that talk about desire. They talk about the power of auto suggestion and like the, this, when you think something into reality, you literally can think something into reality by training your subconscious mind to mold the universe into doing things that you want. And that's what, if you're, when you're looking for your purpose in life, you're, you're basically, your thoughts are going to move the universe out of your way and clear a path that leads you to your purpose. And that's what's the most amazing thing about that book is that it teaches something that's like that. And it's like a, a higher power, your power of auto-suggestion, your third power, whatever your higher power, uh, third-party power, whatever it is. So that's, a, you know, if you haven't read Think and Grow Rich yet, get uh, get after it. I mean, it is a seriously badass book and I love it. Um, so... Uh, you know, I have a copy. I have the, I have the electronic or what do you call it? The audio book. I have the real book. Um, all kinds of fun stuff. So, um, I do recommend that, but hopefully, uh, this was all useful to you guys. Uh, hopefully it gives you some ideas on how to find your purpose in life and, you know, comment below if you have other ideas or topics that you want me to talk about it. You know, happy to, to go into stuff. Um, actually, not comment really below. It's not really a, this is not a YouTube video. Uh, it's a podcast. So, so, um, so what instead of actually just send me an email. Uh, you can reach me at uh, Steve at centercitylistings.com. That's my work email. And, um, we'll, you know, we'll go over some whatever you guys want me to go over um, and we'll go from there. So I will see you guys on the next episode.